Hello everyone, this is Animation 4, welcome back to some more FTB Infinity Evolved. So today is the beginning of a wonderful adventure called Mass Production. Before we do that, there's one thing I want to do first, and that is stop the demon invasion. Look at this. Look at the amount of land they've just taken up. They're almost into the villager village, the testificate village, taken over their land. And they, they just like spread it ruthlessly. Um, the portal hasn't quote unquote upgraded since the first time. I'm not sure if there's a stage three yet. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. Regardless, it's going down. I looked at all of the uses for the shards. There aren't many. Uh, the main use is in these glyphs. Glyphs of the Adept Enchanter and Glyph of Arcane Potential. I don't know what these do, but I highly doubt I'm going to need more than 64 of them. So, with that being said, I'm going to break this and hope it stops the invasion after putting on some armor in case it like blows up in my face. Hmm. I got it. Okay. I didn't expect to get it. This doesn't have silk touch. Alright. I'm going to put some torches down. Marking uh, the end of their settlement. And if they pass these torches, we're in trouble because that didn't work. Uh, so far, I am seeing that there are not many demons around. Like, I came back a while, I was here a little while ago, killing some. They were everywhere. Now I just see one. So maybe that did do it. Maybe the town's just going to stay. In which case, we can have some fun with this town. Doing some... Some destructive experiments on it. Just to put simply. Okay, uh, there's this kind of a... Like a line right around here. And... Yeah, I'm just going to do this. This goes this way. And there's like a line right here. So if it ever spreads past these torches, I'll know it's still growing. And that we have a problem on our hands. Hopefully that's not the case. But we did get the portal back, meaning... Maybe, if we need to, we could just place this portal back down. And... Everything will be fine. And hopefully me storing the portal isn't in here mean does it mean that demons are gonna start spawning for my Emmy system? Because that would make me very sad. Right, on to today's activities. We uh, there's something uh list a uh, clip clipboard. I need a clipboard. I need any one of these. Something called a clipboard right here. And I'm gonna make one real quick. So we can start doing some note taking on stuff that we need for the big task which is one creative energy cell okay so with this i'm not going to worry about simple materials i'm not going to worry about iron or tin or glass or redstone, or diamonds. I'm not going to worry about that stuff, because I have enough in existence that if I need to get more, I can. I'm going to worry about things that you don't, basically you don't dig up. If I need fermented spider eyes, if I need sugar, if I need gas tears, those are the kind of things I'm going to be looking out for. Uh, and we look at the creative energy cell. And I'm going to start doing some math, Take it some numbers. 
and see what this is going to take to do. Some of these are going to be really easy. Some of them are not. But hopefully, it's possible. We just got to do it four times. And it's not All right. So, I've done a little bit more of the checklist. Uh, as you can see, check off the first three items because they are here in our super pretty materials chest. You got 16 resin energy cell frames, four aluminum blocks, and eight pellets of RTG fuel. If you look at the recipe, that is these corners and this entire ring right here. So, of course, sim thinking simply, I decided let's go from the outside in. That's going to be a good plan, which is probably the most expensive bit. Uh, these are enhanced Gagadorian blocks. Uh, if you remember earlier, I had to make a uh, drill, a Gagadorian drill. Uh, this used three enhanced Gagadorian metal, only three metal. Actually, I think the, the cart might have been. No, uh, Gagadorian hull. Yeah, that's... That's not even close. Only three enhanced Gagadorian metal. So three drills per block, and I need 28 blocks. So you remember how hard it was for me to get this drill? Multiply that by uh, 75, and that's how hard this is going to be. So I've calculated it out. You probably saw it when I was looking through here. 20. 2,226 Galgadorian lumps. Uh, the lumps themselves aren't that cheap. That's 10,206 diamonds. I said I wasn't going to put down materials, but 10,000 diamonds is kind of something you got to pay attention to. Uh, so, to uh, compensate for that, I did restart the Ender Quarry. The Ender Quarry is once again running. Uh, over here in the the mushroom biome to be right here. Yeah, nice and pretty. Uh, if you look at the map, you can see where I placed the markers. Uh, actually, there's one right here. There's one right here. There's one right there. So this area, I'd say it's probably about twice the size of the previous. This is like this big. Yeah, it's probably about twice the area. And it is going... Pretty quick. Pretty quick. Uh, we got sixty nine thousand six hundred blocks scanned so far, and I also have it going into the new setup with automatic ore processing. So you have the line of induction smelters that I showed you before. These are now automatically uh, taking in the ores that are mined mined up. And putting them into their respective container. We're actually not getting it all for right now. Uh, but at a at a peak time, you will just see this pipe right here flowing with ingots. It's beautiful. Uh, otherwise, I'm mainly watching this chest right here, which is going to be gathering all the diamond ore. Um, since it started, it looks like we've gotten about 16. <laughs> still not a lot. It's, it's, it's a decent amount. It's more than the laser drill would do. But still not a lot. On to the other bits that we need. Uh, is that this? Is, that's just some time there. <clears throat> we need three thousand four hundred two uh, Galgadorian or uh, Eyes of Galgador is the full name, which is three thousand forty two Ender three thousand four hundred two Ender Eyes. Biggest thing three thousand four hundred two three thousand four hundred two Ender Pearls. I don't have a method of automatic getting Ender Pearls yet for whatever reason, so that's not super easy. Setting up, an ender, setting up an ender perform isn't hard. I can do that pretty quickly. I just haven't done it yet. 13,608 magma cream. Okay, so this is going to be a bit of a concern. That's a lot of slimes. Um, look up magma cream. Uh, you can get it from congealed blood uh, or glue. Otherwise, you're getting it from slime. And blaze powder, which I'm not I'm not getting to the blaze powder yet. <laughs> that that's a bridge we will cross to when we get there. Uh, so something that did just come to mind. We do have this. We have oh wow. We have six thousand eight hundred thirty-eight in here. Uh, so this is the uh, blood machine that I made a while. Watch, what is this? This thing right here is just filling up with blood. Uh, this is the blood machine that I made 
I'm going to be starting Draconic Evolution. And, well, you know, it just functions. And it makes a lot of these uh, co coagulated blood. So it looks like this is going to be the method we're going to be using to get this stuff. Uh, it doesn't operate super fast. But it does slowly tick up. So I might just leave this running for a bit. And should be pretty good. As long as there's some blood in here, uh, these zombies will keep dying and giving me more. Yeah. But it will slowly decay, so I'll, I'll be watching it. I'll be watching it semi-closely. Next, oh wow, deep hole. Next on the list of things, uh, 6,804 gas tears. I don't know what to do about this. We need some method of killing ghasts. Obviously, a typical nether spawner where you have spawn pads isn't going to cut it. I'm probably going to go with a uh, mine factory reloaded spawner. Maybe multiple. And maybe, if possible, uh, a powered spawner. Uh, see what we can put in there. Uh, let me actually... If we can get a... I do see a blaze one. right? Yeah, there's a blaze broken spawner. So we can use that to get the um, the other things. Uh, if I can get a gas into a powered spawner, that'd be really nice. Because uh, powered spawners are about three times faster than regular spa than MFR spawners, so I would want to do that. <clears throat> and then 6,804 fermented spider eyes. Uh, spider eyes, I'm not worried about. I get them. I get a lot of them. I've been trashing them because I have so many. Apparently, I need more, though. Uh, so I just need to set up the system to collect more, right? I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure this gets them. I just throw them out. Yeah, let's see those. This this does get them. I'll make sure to set up some way of keeping them so they don't get thrown out. And mushrooms. That's gonna be annoying, but I can I can farm mushrooms. It's not fun. I might set up a farm for that of some sort. I don't know. And sugar. I'll do something for sugar. That's... Those are all manual things that I just have to sit for a little while and do. The biggest thing right now... Uh, I don't remember what the biggest thing right now is. Uh, let's, let's set up an ender farm. That'll be easy. Okay. So, simple enderman farm. Really, really simple. Really straightforward. Uh... I don't need a ton of ender pearls, but I do need some, and augmenting it would be nice. I have the old system um, at the the island over here that I kind of flooded, where it's just a bunch of just a bunch of conveyor belts. It sometimes works a little bit, maybe. But like, see that guy's not getting oh, he got damaged, so it's it's not great. So instead, I come up with this new slick little design over here where there's nowhere else for Enderman to spawn. Uses some fans to push them into the center chute. Once they're in the center chute, it can funnels them all into this corner. Where in this corner, I enchanted a diamond spike with looting 3 and sharpness 5. And... Let's give it a test. Let's see how this guy does. And I think the fans will get it, will get it from down here. No, he's not being pushed. I forgot to be forward. I have to be a bit forward on this. So these, these last few rows aren't going to do anything. That's unfortunate. I should get rid of them. Uh, so yeah, the thing right now is I need a way of taking the ender pearls they drop and doing something with it. Also, uh, I don't want the experience to back up, so I'll need something to drain out the experience as well. Some dirt. So I gotta go get some some stuff for that. We have a we have a test subject. Let's see what's gonna happen with him. He's not moving. Why is he? Why is he not moving? Oh, he died. Why is he stuck in that corner? I don't understand. Oh, this one's angled, isn't it? Look at that. I'll just probably angle all these towards it. 
but I do have the the loot getter. Uh, if I just punch a hole right here, we could drop in this this vacuum hopper, which is totally in my inventory right now, and have it output items and liquids. Liquids being the liquid XP, by the way. Here we go. They're going. We are getting ender pearls. Very nice. Okay. So this area, however, is not currently chunk loaded. That's that's the bad thing. So what I might end up doing uh, is kind of AFKing here for a little bit. Uh, and just letting it build up. Again, there's not, I don't need a ton of ender pearls, but I need enough so that I don't have to worry about it. Okay, this is too far away. There you go, this, this is good. Cool. A big glass would be nice if I can see through. All right, so I got myself a powered gas spawner. And next thing is, how are we going to kill the ghasts? We need to kill them to get their loot. And the way I'd like to try to do that is with something new. is the Draconic Evolution Mob Grinder. This uh, kills all mobs within an area in front of it. And just takes power. And just kind of spits the loot out the back. It does, as far as I know, one hit every mob. So we could do some, some more stuff with this in the future. But right now, let's let's use it to kill some ghasts. Uh, so looking at the the requirements, mana dust we have. We've made it already. We set up the whole four smeltery system to make mana dust. Pellets of Arch G Fuel, simple enough. Draconium block, more than just the ingots, but not, not horrible. Uh, let's set up a recipe for this uh, wyvern core. Uh, what is that taking? The, oh, draconic core first. Set up a craft recipe for the Draconic Core. Grab one of those. Throw this into the system. Right there. Um, then the Wyvern Core. I am horrible at finding things. Where's the Wyvern Core? Was it not here like 30 seconds ago? This thing. Uh, it takes a vibrant alloy. It also takes a flux electrum. So, got to make those, give it some time, uh, and then you can get this recipe in. Here's the wyvern core right here. There is the crafting recipe for the wyvern core. Get that thrown in. Might as well throw in a craft recipe for the chronic block. Ah, shoot. I didn't make one. Make it. Throw this in there. Uh, there is the draconium block crafting recipe. Uh, I need to make one of those. So the next thing, probably the more expensive thing, is the sword of the wyvern on top. Uh, this, of course, takes two draconium blocks. Got it. Uh, two mana dust, got it. Two wyvern cores, got it. Emerald ore, got it. Uh, Thievic sword, can get it. Wyvern energy core is just some destabilized red, some tough wyvern cores. So, not hard. Just a lot of crafting, some materials, not hard. And a few nether stars. We got it, got it, got it. Yoink. So it actually looks like you can't melt redstone in the smeltery. So, I threw it in the magma crucible, and from here, I should be able to just pump it in, like this. And that should go up. Theoretically, it's just going to get pulled out by this and dumped onto here. But, that's the only way of getting it in the smeltery. <laughs> or, or just onto a cast. Uh, from here, I need a wyvern core. And I should just be able to drop it on this. And it gets filled up very slowly with redstone. Oh, that, looks, that looks neat. 
Nice and slow. Apparently it's full. Hey, it's done. Cool. That was easy. Wyvern Energy Core. There's only one thing left to do. And that is not blow up. So I will do that. That should be everything I need for both the Sword of the Wyvern and the Mob Grinder itself. Beautiful. Uh, so just a Tesseract so I can take these things with me. And maybe an Ender Chest to get the item sent back. I'll get this chest uh, colored to my return color, which is light blue, red, light blue. And then I basically put this thing wherever I want, and it will make gas tears. Okay, I believe everything is all set up in here. Uh, that already has the capacitor in it, apparently. Must have put it in it. Uh, so I got the gr grinder right there. Apparently it does not pick up mob drops. So I have a vacuum up in the middle, and those fans are just to push items. Main base power. Uh, receive energy. Enable. Hi, you, you get some, you get some power in here. All oh, these fans. I can't see. No. Fifteen k off tick. Um, I might not put in the whole capacity. 15,000 R if a tick to spawn ghasts. That seems a little excessive. Am I even getting any of this? No, I'm not. It's not, it's not progressing at all. Even this way. Which means we don't have enough power. Uh, I might go to a... To, um... And I'm a far spawner. So that, that probably won't take 15,000 R of a tick. It'll spawn less. But it'll at least spawn some. Alright, so a little time has passed. And we have now 1,700 gas tiers. 1,900 uh, ender pearls. And we're at kind of a sticky situation. So, the current power methods that I have are confusing even to me. I have the windmill farm which is right above the base right right there. Uh, that generates I don't even know uh, probably about 3k. We have the biofuel farm which generates uh, almost 16k. We have the reactor in the main base, which went on, which it almost never is, generates about like 1.2k. And then we have the wither farm in the last millennium that generates 40k when it's on. But all that energy goes towards recycling cobblestone slabs. Uh, so the ender quarry over here uh, is has two upgrades on it. It has the silk touch upgrade and the speed three upgrade. Uh, the silk touch upgrade you see has a power drain multiplier of 1.5. So it takes 1.5 times the power. That's not much considering the base power consumption is about like 500 RF. RF per tick. Uh, so that brings it to like 750. Uh, the pa the speed three upgrade has a power to multiplier of times two, so you'd be like, okay, so it's like fifteen hundred. That's that's nothing. That's per block. And the speed three upgrade increases the amount of blocks coming in by a lot. And I measured it out. It's about twenty two k RF per tick to run the Ender Quarry at Silk Touch and Speed Three. Uh, so, the biggest problem with that is if I attach it to any of my power networks, being uh, the windmill farm with the reactor or the biofuel, 
it will drain all the power from it. Because uh, right now those two, these two networks are not really connected. I don't think. Do, I, that this is why this is where it gets confusing. Cause I'm not sure if or how they are connected. Because I may have just placed a tesseract somewhere and had it pull or push. So they might be exchanging power. They might not. Where each of these are sending their power, I don't know because of the tesseract network and whatever, what source of power everything's using. I also don't know, like, um, is the, I'm trying to think of an example. Is this thing over here using, oh, it has its own power generation, but like what's using what? That's kind of what I'm trying to say. Uh, it gets very confusing. So I would like to consolidate my power to, uh, to one main thing. In here, I put auto crafting recipes for uh, vibrant capacitor banks. And I really like these uh, first because they're multi blocks. Uh, so, like, this is six of this is five of them all connected. Am I, am I losing power somehow? Where are my power going? That, that's weird. Uh, there's five of them here. They all connect up. Unit store is 125k. Less than this, but the fact that it's multi blocks is really nice. And also, the really helpful thing is it shows you the RF per tick. So it's really useful for measuring systems. And that's how I can see what's going on over here. I put another one right here. Uh, you can see this one's just full. So I don't have to worry about it. If it starts losing, I can see how much. And then how I, if it starts losing power, I can see how fast it's losing power and how many bioreactors I'd have to add. So I'd like to consolidate all of the power production and make it so whenever I produce power, I send it down a tesseract and it gets stored in one massive power bank. So a massive uh, vibrant capacitor bank. Uh, these things aren't super expensive, they're just time consuming. Actually, let me show you something. Uh, when I try to make them, the biggest thing that takes a while are these energetic alloys. It takes about five seconds per ingot when you do it in the um, alloy smelter down here. Even at speed three, it's about five seconds per ingot. If you do it, however, with the arc furnace, it's about 10 seconds per ingot. However, you do 12 ingots at once. So it is a lot faster. You get a stack done in about 30 seconds, as opposed to three minutes. So just, just a little side note. Uh, so that's what I'd like to do. So the question is, what, again, what is going to be the main source of power. We have a lot of power coming in, but we need a lot more for what we're going to end up doing, especially when we get to charging draconium blocks for draconic evolution. That takes a lot of power as well. So how are we going to get all this power? I have done my thinking, and I've come up with a few ways. Uh, the first way is... Uh, uh, with the nether star generator, we have one of these in the world already. Um, it's run off a turtle, which has the, the problem with it right now. It's run off a turtle, which has a internal program that it cycles through. And if I ever log out in the middle of the internal program, it resets at whatever stage it is, which can cause basically the whole thing to just break if I log out when it's on pretty much. Uh, so we would upgrade, update this system. And I think we would do that by using the mob grinder, which I believe instant kills mobs for a very low cost of RF. It's 1k RF per kill. So not a lot of RF. Uh, so we could figure out a way of implementing that and getting a ton of nether stars and power the nether star generator. Another solution is with the culinary generator. Uh, this uh, generates RF using food. And I believe we have uh, Pam's Harvest Crafts. So we have lots of food choices. Uh, so what my plan would be for this is we go through, we find a food made out of nine or less materials that produces a lot of RF. We set up a similar system similar to this farm over here where we have the nine foods growing and it would be just these foods are all I need to make the output then it crafts them together and throws them in 
maybe even like a 64 times culinary generator. We can see how much power we can get out of that. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we can figure out a way to make that really powerful. Uh, other methods, oh, I had, what were the other methods? I had this all thought out. Uh, big reactor, we could make a nice massive big reactor. The tricky thing about that though is the yellowium fuel rods, which make the reactor more powerful, uh, are really expensive because they take pellets of RTG fuel, which is three plutonium each. Uh, I have a little bit of plutonium being made uh, out of some uh, UU matter, but it's still, still expensive. But it can be done. It's, it's not that it can't be done. It's that it's going to take a lot of my UU matter. Uh, otherwise, I could make like a thousand of these. I could, I don't know. Th those, those are my main, main three options there. All of them have the potential to be really creative with how I do it and have the potential to make a lot of power. Uh, so that's going to be the focus of next episode. If you have any suggestions or any comments on any of those ideas, whichever one's your favorite, let me know down below and I'll take that into consideration when making my decision of what we're going to do. But for right now, uh, uh, I'm going to consolidate the power system. That is that I could do right now. Uh, so we're probably going to want... That's a good number. 49 gives me a... Oh, that's, I need a cubic. So 64 of these, what do I need? 1500, that's a lot. Yeah, I'm gonna do that with the alloy furnace. Uh, I'm gonna make this, it'll be fun. Uh, I need some more uh, electron tubes, but that's just some manual crafting. It's no problem. So, be back through the second when we have a really, really big power bank. So however much I'd like to get uh, this thing done, if I want to get this video out today um, and have it be under 40 minutes, uh, I got to call it there. Uh, but progress is going. By the start of next episode, I should have the massive capacitor bank ready to go. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think about those options for power. We could have a lot of fun with it. There's lots, lots of different things we could do with that. It should be fun. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.